Hello. Hello, hello. I don't think this is going to work. I'm just going to go this way a little bit so I'm not staring directly into the sun. There we go. <laughs> that works. <coughs> um, well, here we are again. What a beautiful morning. My gosh. Sitting in the, my backyard and, you know, I almost didn't come out. And then it's like, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Out. Um, just uh, last night, I kind of tell you how I, I got to this last night, at my men's team, uh, we were discussing the uh, whether we were waiting in our lives to f hear the answers to the questions of life. Or if we even knew who we were. And it was a, a you know, a, a, we call it an exercise or technology that we did last night. And the question, you know, uh, was asked several different ways. But <clears throat> the real question in life is, uh, do, who are you? Do, do you know who you are? And, uh, uh, you know, tell me who you are. And uh, a couple of great things that there's a uh, uh, kind of a weekend, a three day or seven day uh, um, exercise that one can do on that question. You know, but it's a big question. I have friends that are doing uh, what's called enlightenment intensive this weekend. And uh, uh, it is a big question. It's like, who are you? Who are you? And who told you who you were? And, um, and what else did they tell us that may not have been true? And uh, last night we talked a little bit about a few of the things that, that weren't true that we, you know, as adults, um, if that's what we are, as adults we have even done to our own children. You know, we started them out with, uh, you know, with stories uh, about Santa Claus and and nothing wrong with these. I'm just sharing that that uh, um, eventually uh, children realize that the Easter Bunny and and uh, um, whatever cultural stories that we've dreamed up for children aren't true. And and uh, and and the, if that's not true, what else is not true? <laughs> and uh, we have made up stories about everything and labeled everything. Um, just as a, a little example, I know I'm kind of bouncing around here, but last night was the most beautiful moon. The most beautiful moon. Now, what do you think the moon thinks it is? Uh, last night's moon we called a harvest moon. So we've named it. And uh, um, if I was a child I, and somebody said, that's a harvest moon, I would say, wow, okay, that's a harvest moon. You know, and not even question that, the, you know, maybe the moon was here for us uh, so that we could uh, bring our harvest in late into the night. And that, but that, that, that was the story around the harvest moon. And then later in this month, we have a second moon in October, and it's called the hunter's moon. So we have a moon so that we can hunt late into the day uh, to bring in game for our, uh, for our, our, uh, bring you game for, for the winter, you know. So we've named everything. And as children, we accepted those things to be true, and we've gone on through our lives with those as the truth. And in some cases, the truth that we heard was about ourselves. Because, you know, as a child, we're wondering uh, in some ways, uh, who am I, where do I fit, how, do, how am I part of this? And... Uh, uh, Yes, yes. See, Hunter's Blue Moon. Now, Cammy knows that they've called it that, but who named it? And is it true? It's just a name, right? It's just a name. It's not, it's not, it's not true, you know, like we've named everything. And, uh, and, and we believe that, that, oh, this is this. This is a, this is a, you know, a harvest moon last night. And, uh, um, as if it's, the truth 
Do we really know what the truth is about anything? If we don't know who we are, and you may say on the surface, well, I know who I am. I'm, you know, I'm canny. I'm, uh, you know, and I live at such and such an address, and I'm in a relationship with such and such a guy, and I have uh, X amount of children, or, you know, and so we have a description of ourselves, but we don't know who we are in relation to anything or nothing. Just who are we? <coughs> um, that's the question. And it's the, it's the one that kind of is underlying and drives us a bit crazy because uh, we've grown up, most of us, pretending to be, you know, something. Uh, we've been given our, our uh, instructions by, by parents and, and uh, God bless them, they most, you know, they didn't know better. <clears throat> and school, we've been indoctrinated. And, uh, and with that indoctrination, we came away with uh, judgments and opinions and, and certainties about the world <laughs> that, that aren't true. Uh, to what happens with the alcoholic and the addict <coughs> is that uh, we who get into a 12-step program realize that we have to build a relationship with a higher power. And most of us were told something, we had established some sort of a belief as a child around God or a higher power that, that didn't fit for us. It wasn't true, actually. It wasn't true. A separate God, uh, uh, you know, uh, something that we had objectified or named and labeled as separate from us. So began the separation. And uh, so no matter what we did um, in our quest to have a relationship with a higher power, um, we, f we first had to, to let go of this idea that it was God was separate from us and that we had to appease him or her and uh, uh, we had to earn um, love uh, and, uh, um, because uh, somehow we'd been taught that and those were some of the great lies really <clears throat> not that people knew that they were lying not that people knew that it wasn't true um, so for us for the addict and the alcoholic whose very life depends on a relationship with a higher power, a belief in the higher power isn't enough. The relationship has to be there. And how do we have a relationship with something that's separate from us? So we get to this point in our, in our awakening when we recognize that uh, if we don't know who we are, we've been fed a story about you know ourselves and we don't know who we are and we don't have a you know a a suitable concept for god then then some work needs to be done and we kind of reevaluate ourselves and the lessons in in the 12 steps point us to uh, first of all, surrendering our way of life because somehow we've been taught that we had to control life and we had to uh, use our, um, our tools like uh, either to be generous and loving and kind to get what we want or to be angry and, 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 and uh, controlling and, and uh, to get what we want. So, and we found that that doesn't work just didn't work. It doesn't work for us. <laughs> so, okay, I'll surrender. I get it. I can't manage my life with those tools. And, and then we've been pointed towards uh, having this relationship with a, with a God that Bill Wilson described in We Agnostics really, really well. He said, God either is or he isn't. Either he's everything or he's nothing. Now we're talking. Now we're not talking about a limited version. Uh, or in the Hindu world, uh, you know, multiple, multiple deities that we, you know, can fit every situation. Uh, we're talking about um, a God that is, uh, that permeates everything, that is where we are one with. So who are we? We are one with God. And we become 
And we start to realize that by letting go of our, our beliefs and who we thought we were. It doesn't work. And many of us know it, you know. Lots of us stayed sober uh, on, on uh, service, stayed sober on, you know, um, really focusing on a relationship with God that we, that we didn't really get. But there's a possibility to go deeper. That's all I want to say is that we let go of the stories, you know, along with Santa Claus. We let go of this idea of a separateness, uh, God that's separate from us. And we be here now. Be here now. You know, the, the lie is that, you know, we, the lie took us to living in the future, living in the past, you know, and t trying to depend on the mind to navigate life. And we don't have to depend on the mind to navigate life. We don't have to depend on the mind to navigate life. We can surrender the mind and from a surrendered place rely on a God consciousness. And through prayer and meditation, we, we connect with that God consciousness. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. And so, and, and as we surrender into that, our natural state you know, we, we start to become aware and we let go of anger, we let go of fear, moment to moment. You know, it's not just a one-time thing, we let go of it. And, it, and, and we, we move into our natural state, is this oneness with, with God as we don't really understand Him from the mind, but we're aware of Him and conscious of it. This is it, we're in it. You know, we're conscious of this. We begin to breathe into it and we slow down. We feel the stillness. We feel the presence in each moment. Yeah. The struggle's gone. We stop struggling. So recognize that, that a lot of what we thought was true was not true. And we you know, literally become aware of the presence in each moment, in each thing, in each, in life, the presence of this, this unbelievable power that created it, all of this, not separate from us, but we are it, we are life, we're not living life, we are life, bit of a jump, but worth it, <laughs> okay, I gotta go back to my little reading that I do every day, uh, I think it's the 3rd of October, is it? Yes, it is. Hmm. So, this is it. Sometimes, you know, I, I think I go too far for people, but uh, I'll, hopefully not. Um, because then when I come back to this little book, and it's, it's quite uh, practical. You know, it's more, uh, you know, based in belief systems, and, and it's a bit practical. So... Um, you know, and, and uh, I, I want you to know there's nothing wrong with stories to help us see uh, uh, more closely who we are, you know, and, and uh, like um, we're going to do the Bhagavad Gita in a couple of next week, we're going to start the Bhagavad Gita and it's a beautiful story, right? It is a beautiful story. I want you to be part of that. It's a, it really does bring us to an expanded uh, idea of God. Uh, it's a story between Krishna and Arjuna. In, uh, so it's out of the Hindu text. It's beautifully done. Okay. Um, October 3rd. Is, are we October 3rd? We must be. Tell me. Kayla. October 3rd. I think so. I'm going to go with October 3rd. Anybody have any idea? Oh no, it is October 2nd. Okay, I, no wonder I was hesitating. Okay, it, this, yesterday was the first. It says here, October 2nd, thought for the day. What, it says, makes an effective talk at an AA meeting? Is it not fine? Is it not a fine speech uh, with a fine choice of words and an impressive delivery? 
Is it not a fine speech with fine choice of words and impressive delivery? Often a few simple words, direct from the heart, are more effective than a most polished speech. There is always a temptation to speak beyond our own experience in order to make a good impression. This is never effective. What does come, uh, what does come, what does not come from the heart, does not reach the heart. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. I love that. What does not come from the heart does not reach the heart. What comes from personal experience and sincere desire to help others reaches the heart. Do I speak uh, for effect or with a deep desire to help? So that's the thought for the day. Beautiful. Beautiful. Meditation for the day. Thy will be done. Thy will be done must be your oft repeated prayer yes it is and in the willing of God's will in the willing of God's will there should be gladness yes it says he says in his meditation for the day you should delight you should delight to do that will because when you do all your life goes right and everything tends to work well for you in the long run. Certainly. So, you know, God's will, I mean, again, when we speak of, in this book, we, he speaks of God, it's easy for us to think of God as a, something separate from us. And, and, uh, but living in what we feel is God's will in the moment, uh, you know, it's a beautiful way to live. This is it. You know, we're, again, we're, we're in the flow. We're moving with the flow and it's, you know, it's, it's not, not out of fear, it's out of, we're following the energy. Um, when you are honestly trying to do God's will and humbly accepting the results, nothing can seriously hurt you. Isn't that beautiful? I've said that many times, nothing can seriously hurt you. He who accepts the will of God in his life may not, may not inherit the earth, but he will inherit real peace of mind. <laughs> Yes, that's beautiful. Love it. Prayer for the day. I pray that I may have yielded will. I may have a yielded will. I pray that my will may have attuned to the will of God. Yeah. So, it's a beautiful little book called the 24-Hour Day Book. I've been reading it here since the uh, 1st of May. And, <coughs> yeah, thank you for listening and, and joining us and a um, couple of quick things Monday evening we have uh, you know our little meditation group here at the house you're welcome come and join us Monday um, or join us on on zoom uh, um, right we're gonna we're on zoom join us on zoom or join us on uh, um, on Facebook live YouTube live yeah so that's Monday and uh, love you. What a beautiful day, eh? Wow. Mm. Life is simple. Keep it simple, baby. Okay. <laughs>